All right, guys, this one is called Top 10 Underrated Anime to Watch in 2024. I expect Orb to be on this. Let's check it out. Only 2024 is almost at its end. There is only one last month before we enter New Year. And I yes, really sir. To recap some great underrated anime of 2024. They That's crazy, bro. 2024 is almost near its end. I swear this year just started where I was so hyped to begin streaming my reactions again for the first time, actually, and have solo leveling. But that was January. Bro, it's almost December. What happened? I blinked. I blinked and nearly 12 months has passed by. I hope every one of you has, I don't know, worked towards your goals and have done something with your resolutions that you made or will you be just repeating those resolutions and being ignorant and another year will pass. You guys may have missed out on. anime I've selected are barely talked about and I think they are really worth being watched Okay. are indeed in need of let's say new anime which I'm sure you are since you clicked on the video in the first place so without wasting your time let us get started number 10 hmm I feel like we could... Okay, the do over damage is Conqueror's Dragon Emperor. Yeah, I, I have heard of this one. Some people even, you know, requested to watch this, but it never made it onto a poll. Based off of that intro section alone, it looks pretty... Like, I would probably watch it and enjoy it. I'd like to start this list off with the Do Over Damsel Conquers the Dragon Emperor. This is one of the more underrated anime currently airing this season. A very cute, well this animated season. series of how a girl gets betrayed by the man she was meant to marry, and she was then reincarnated or reborn in her younger body of a child to take a different path that will lead her on a different outcome. Okay. This time she confessed her love to- So it's like a regression to not repeat her mistakes kind of deal in this medieval kind of fantasy setting. The Dragon Emperor as- you know, as a joke, but he did take it seriously and was quite interested in marrying her. But now things are- Okay, so, uh, I mean, it does say conquers the Dragon Emperor, so rather than marrying the nice, I don't know, person who was actually evil, they're gonna marry the Dragon Emperor, who probably sounds scary and evil, but is actually a good person? ...are gonna be super interesting and different so far, but I'm really enjoying this- anime. Okay, okay. Oh... I saw Maki and Hero in there, but this should be 8 must watch. Orb as well. Great. Yo, Elf Bride. I don't know. Ishura, I've heard of it, don't know. Sentai Rangers, right? Salad Bowl. Uh, Maki and Isekai Shikaku Orb. A lot of these actually we watched. I'm really enjoying this anime. Number 9. Would you guys prefer something along the lines of a demon lord and a slave elf girl? <laughs> yeah, the whole slave elf girl thing. Listen, um... The collar actually gets used as like, almost like a wedding ring, you know? And it's endearing because she chooses to put the slave collar on for Zagan. It's not like submitting under this tyranny. No, it, it, it's beautiful love, but obviously there's some, you know, some, some themes that many people would not be too into. Well then, you gotta check out an Arc Demon's Dilemma. This is a good show. <laughs> First episode, baby. And then this girl then just turns into kind of like a gag character later for the end of the church side. Yo, I remember watching this. This was actually such a wholesome story too. Just this fantasy setting, you know, between a demon lord who is just aloof and has no social skills. And an slave elf who's been treated wrong all her life, wanting to find love. And somehow, some way, the two gets together and it's just, it's just pure diabetes. And the whole like, there's like a lot of action involved, you know. We have like a, eventually the family begins to like expand beyond just Nephi and Zagan, you know, the elf slave and the demon lord. You know, some semblance of like a daughter type or like a grandfather type appears. It's a really wholesome show. Rip. Chastile is her name, I think, right? Chastile. This is a new anime from last season. A soon to become demon lord named Zagan purchases a very rare silver haired elf girl from an auction for 1 million gold coins. All his life savings. Her beauty. She may be his slave or maid, but he has deep feelings for her, yet struggles to express them a lot. The show will lead to misunderstandings, wholesome moments, and some action so you get to see yep. the true power of a soon to become demon lord. 
Yeah, I think solid is a decent, you know, place. I thought it was like a 7 out of 10 kind of anime, maybe 7.5, who knows. But uh, it was fun for what it was worth, and I'm glad I watched it. Hope it I hope it gets a season 2, I think there's potential for more. But interesting that Doer Damsel Conqueror's Dragon Emperor is higher than, you know, Elf Slave. So, yo, new gauntlet? <laughs> new gauntlet, guys? Should we introduce a new Gauntlet series and bring uh, Do Over Damsel in? I don't see much people, you know, commenting about it though. Or talking about it. Maybe. I don't know this. There was potential there to whore out the girl by flipping her panties there. I'm glad that they didn't do the shameless fan service. Right over here. They could have done it. They could have done some shameless shit, but they didn't. Yo, is she gonna be okay? The weakest tamer began a journey to pick up trash. Pick now, up trash? Take a step back from action and insanity to something more calm, but still an Isekai reincarnation. That isekai, we could probably check it out. I, I mean, just because it's easy, I don't know if it's going to do well, but just calm, soothing, slice of life, more chill way of ass, you know, uh, doing storytelling of this fantasy show. It's highly worth investing your time into. Now, a girl is reincarnated into a fantasy world where people are ranked by stars to, determ to, to determine their power or skill. Is she zero star? However, the child she, w she has become, named Ivy, is born starless. She's not special at all, and people <gasps> call her an outcast, and eventually- But there must be something OP, right? The, always the premise of these shows is main character is an outcast, depicted as a loser, a weakling, because they can't do the one thing that, you know, this world is measured by, but secretly, they're really OP in a different way. ...banished her or bullied her away from her village, but now she is out there in the outside world, for scavenging for trash, her friends a rare slime- Dude, this shit is actually exactly our type of show. It's got all the themes. But no one's really been talking about it. Creature and does what she can to survive. Must watch. Wow. Went to the most watched tier, man. Yo. Maybe just random, we just try it out. <laughs> nah, I, I don't know. It's, there's too many, even like introducing Rama right now, it, it's, we, we got a lot of projects to you know, focus on, but uh. The slice of life aspect, I wonder if it's heavy? Oh, shit. Hmm, but uh, you, you never know. It's, sometimes it's just worth to just d dip your toes in the water, just try it and see what the response is like. Can't just survive. Now if you guys really want some- This, the Battle Royale anime. I've heard amazing things about it, but I've also heard a lot of things that uh, people were upset because the Battle Royale didn't actually happen and every episode was just this episodic introduction of the characters and the actual thing didn't pop off, I heard. Epic action anime. Take a look at this battle royale themed anime for characters fighting for a chance to become the next Demon King. <laughs> Animation looks solid. Looks cool. Ishura is pretty underrated this year, with the current demon king dying, a new one must rise. And here we have a group of powerful beings with supernatural abilities or skills who will fight amongst themselves to claim the spot of demon king. They must prove their strength to find out who is the best and just pretty much battle it out. It's a very simple concept. Is there? Yeah, sounds very generic. Unga Boonga, Battle Royale. <sighs> I care more about the story than the action. I don't think I'll be checking this one out. I remember reacting to a trailer and trying to gauge the interest from my audience too, and you guys just didn't give a fuck about it either. There is no main character, but it's just really fun to watch. With amazing animation, by the way. Damn, he put that shit above Elf Pride, man. God damn. Amazing animation, by the way. It's a good story? Really? Okay. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what language is that? <laughs> now we're moving.
moving on to Dr. Elise. This okay. anime tells the story of a protagonist who is a villainess of a noble descent. Oh, villainess. And how evil she is, you know, by taking people's lives. Okay, I'm always into villainous shows. But later down the line, she had a change of heart. And instead, she wanted to help people, but her dreams were robbed upon dying in a plane crash. Hmm. However, she then wakes up in her, her original body and wishes to use her advanced medical knowledge to continue down the path of saving lives as Dr. Elise. And instead of wanting to take the throne... Basically, she has advanced knowledge of medicine in a time where people thought like, I don't know, just like random voodoo rituals would cure illnesses and she's like basically just miracle person. She is now a medical doctor. Okay. Number five. Go, go, loser, rain. Absolutely great show. Bro, this was so good in the beginning. But something changed. Ever since that we entered the arc where the main character infiltrated the enemy base and started doing team tryouts, I feel a lot of people's interest died down. What people really cared about was the whole initial premise. This whole, like, villain story where the villains are, you know, the Power Rangers. And they're oppressing these, you know, people who are shown as bad people. And, and that was so fascinating. It was, the animation was fucking cracked. The ending of this, you know, anime also went viral online and we farmed the shit out of that. Everything was great. But again, people are expecting what they wanted in the first couple episodes. Then you deviate the story so much that it lost a lot of the audience's attention and it kind of just died down is what I saw online. Ranger or Ranger reject. Oh boy. Now, this is a very, very good anime from this year and probably among the top favorite shows of this year due to it's, it's just it's it's got a very unique concept mm -hmm. and just so well. Done. I love it. That's right. We got a play monster. And like, this is actually such a big brain show too. There's so many mysteries, different timelines, who the bosses are, why is one of our bosses still alive and still, you know, fucking shit up. Like, it, it, it had a very interesting plot, but I think it, it lost the sauce. It really forgot, like, what the people wanted from the beginning. And that's the thing, right? When you are, I mean, it came out as a manga first and then anime. It's not as if you're releasing this on a week by week basis as an anime with like new you know content being made on the spot. So I don't know what the author's vision was in the beginning. Maybe the manga sales were okay, but for the anime people, it, it, I the common talking point that I hear and the frustrations from the audience that enjoyed this is that it just deviated as soon as we entered the whole I don't know like uh, team selections, who's going to be fighting who, right? That kind of shit amongst the Power Rangers themselves. The rangers in this anime turned out to be the villains, faking themselves as the heroes so people look up to them as they put on shows that are rigged for them to win since they made a deal with the villains who are trapped in a sky base and are let out only on one condition. One of the villains named D, however, got fed up with playing pretend and now wants to infiltrate the ranger base, expose the truth, and, yep. and just, you know, eliminate the power rangers first. This is a great watch. Check it out. Yeah, <laughs> ah, Salad Bowl Henshin, the reverse isekai. It was a very cute show, but you know, YouTube reaction stuff, all that matters is my audience wants to watch it and it didn't really resonate with a lot of you guys. <laughs> Casual terrorism. I see that. A Salad Bowl of Eccentrics is a very neat, wholesome anime that combines mystery and reverse isekai. Eccentrics. The protagonist named Sarah is a girl from another world who came to Japan and grew really accustomed to living here. But then she meets a private detective who solves cases and she doesn't mind showing off her cool powers in front of people until causing a big commotion as the guy decides to just take her in. He then made her his partner and together they work on cases, solving them and catch the bad guys. Yeah, I don't know much about this show because we only saw episode one. All I remember is the silver-haired wife being homeless, and that was, that was one of the funniest shit possible for me. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's really good. I haven't seen beyond episode one, but what I've seen, it was very enjoyable. It's very simple, yet a very effective series that I really recommend checking out. <laughs> Gets put into meh category, though. <laughs> glaze, glaze, glaze. Meh. Now we're moving on. 
this could be the best rom com of 2024. Yeah. Mocking Heroin by A1 Pictures. The sheer amount of effort put into this project, it is just art, man. And to think that I was just gonna not watch it until a community member mentioned that y'all should check it out, and we did, and goddamn. Just crazy concept that the main character is just... He just collects all the losing girls, right? This is a show about a dude that is such a loser, has no presence, and a bunch of girls who gets cucked, you know, after losing in a triangle, suddenly fawns all around them. It, it's such an interesting concept, and it's really good. On to a really unique and fun anime where you get to be in the perspective of a protagonist who is a background character. Yeah, I don't know if this is underrated. I don't know exactly how much motion this was making online, but, uh... I'm not sure if it's underrated either, yeah. And Dangerous in My Heart Season 2 was also really good. It was phenomenal. Angels in My Heart Season 2 also had a lot of, you know, um, loose ends being met, right? With more of development from Ichikawa and Yamada and, you know, huge things happening. So both of them are really good, but Makin, I think, is definitely contender for best rom-com. <laughs> Roshitere is not even close in terms of, let's say, quality. But in terms of people watching and numbers... More people are going to check out Roche today because sex sells. The stupid incest jokes, Ohio and Isan, like... <laughs> that's the thing, bro. That's the thing about just, you know, online media, just the average person enjoying what they want. You can create just art like this, which might get overshadowed by incest memes. What a life, huh? What a fucking life we live in. And what I mean by this is that the main character watches how the heroines of the series or the girls lose or simply get rejected in this rom-com series. Although he does get dragged into situations where people kind of just ask for help or advice from him and eventually he too can experience what it's like to fall in love. But soon he will find himself as an important character in the show as he gets surrounded by a bunch of losing heroines. That forehead. Really just want to talk it out and... Fuck this Mitsuki guy, bro. Lemon deserves way better. I hate this guy. Oh my god. Lemon's conclusion was so just unsatisfying to me. And if you watch this, you'll know what I mean. Ugh. But thank god Komari exists. Thank god Komari exists, man. The Komari story arc was beautiful. Just get some advice and, you know, friendly conversations. It's such a good anime. I really yes, it is. Isekai Shikaku, baby! Is this underrated? Probably. It's definitely airing during a time when summer 2024, there was like no other really Isekais airing and not many people talked about it, but we did cover it due to the bizarreness of the, you know, whole Sensei's powers. I enjoyed this a lot. This is again another like 7.5 out of 10-ish, you know, anime, I think. <laughs> Sensei just wants to die. This is a very cool isekai anime of a protagonist who wants nothing to do with life anymore and wishes to, well, die. Not exist. <laughs> no, no, that does sound kind of sad, but yeah. it's really what he wants the most. No Longer Allowed in the World follows Dazai, who is a protagonist that gets summoned as a hero, but ultimately wants nothing to do with life and wants to die peacefully somewhere yep. his choice. Although he looks incredibly weak with only one hit point or HP to his status, he surprisingly has a lot of tricks to his sleeve that makes him pretty strong. But keep in mind, this is a parody anime and it does a great job at making you laugh and do enjoy it. Yeah, it was a, it was a solid anime. Nothing special, nothing bad. I don't think it was mid though, I think it was definitely above average. The whole aspect of how Sensei just didn't want to live at all, found everything was so mundane and boring. But goes on to, you know, he gets excited when hearing about depressing tragedies of other people. And then his powers is also fucking just crazy, because in the beginning it looks like he has no powers, but later on... <laughs> Let's just say that he starts deporting illegal immigrants, and we made a lot of rounds online. My, my thumbnail, my title about this Isekai main character is deporting illegal immigrants, bro. So many like power scaling subreddits and like, meme subreddits found that shit and it kind of went viral. That was fucking hilarious. But it's funny because it's true. That's what Sensei does. 
the whole premise of every you know isekai character coming in here being shitty it, it's a twist right and um even like the themes the lesson it's telling you i think that one of the most profound themes of this show was that episode with the casino the innocent village and new people coming in and making a casino and the innocent people the locals are getting pushed out and there's this drug trade and alcoholism and gambling happening right but it turns out the moral of the lesson is that even if you get rid of the evil people it's not that simple the locals themselves could also be corrupted right and it's just this tragic lesson of everything is not good or bad you know it's not binary. It's, it's, there's no true false. There's like these nuances that exist. And, you know, the gold white knight hero thinking, you know, he's serving justice. But at the end of the day, none of that shit mattered. That was a very deep lesson. Isekai Chicago, I think, is definitely a show worth watching if you want to give it a chance. Orb time, baby. It's orbin time. Finally, for the last anime on today's video list, Orb. Yes, I think this is underrated. A show that is set in Poland, I think. Back in the day. Before, you know, heliocentrism, the notion that the world revolves around the sun, that the planetary systems, right, everything revolves around the sun. When the church kind of, you know, hid that information and said the world is the most important part. God has chosen us and we are the center of the universe and anyone that contradicts this theory is condemned as a heretic and you have executors coming and torturing you. It is such a different setting from all these, you know, animes that we watch on a daily basis. Fantastic. But it's hard to get that kind of viewership with the normies watching anime because they don't really care about this kind of setting. They want booba. They want harems. They want shitty isekai, harem, etchy stuff, right? People can't appreciate shows like this. Definitely underrated. On the movements of the earth. I was wrong about this one, boys. <laughs> this is the most underrated anime of the current season. And sure, it may not be for everyone, as it truly just focuses on a lot on the subject of science and discovery or astronomy. The protagonist, Raphael, is a genius prodigy who is expected to go to university and study theology. However, he meets a mysterious man who specializes in astronomy with a brilliant background of his work which ultimately got him arrested. Now, mm -hmm. Raphael takes a huge interest in astronomy to learn about the planets and stars as that is his major goal in what he wants to pursue for his career. It is risky, but man, what what this anime shows is crazy cool. It is. And it's a crazy plot twist too. Everything about it. Check it out. J just check it out. Yeah, I think that all these animes, like the one I haven't checked that I'm really interested in actually is Do Over Damsel and uh, this one, the, uh, the Trash Collector Girl. I don't know about Dr. Elise or Ishira, but like these two I'm kind of interested in. That is all I have for this video of the underrated anime from 2024. But trust me though, do check out these anime whenever you got the time and I hope you won't be disappointed with my recommendations. Okay. If you did enjoy them, please do drop- Oh wait! Has anyone seen D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D Destruction? I know it's not the actual title, but it kind of sounds like that. Precious Anime recommended that to me. And I checked out a couple. Dude, that shit was fucking crazy. Oh, you can't see the list? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Shit, I'm sorry guys, I've been hiding the- That's why I need to put my fucking face here. Oh my god. Here it is. <laughs> Nobody fucking mentioned it. My face is hiding the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I eat I... Womp womp. Yeah, there it is guys. There, there's a the final list of anime. <laughs> yeah, this is why I like to prefer having my face in the right side, because a lot of the time the shit's focused in the left corner. But regarding DD Destruction, like, I heard that it was so, so good, but Due to the lack of good subs and marketing, nobody knows what's happening, right? I feel like that could be underrated anime too. I don't know, but that's pretty much it. Please go give Mr. Anime Recon a like on the video. It's a 600k sub channel, bro. Maybe he has a lot more content that we can farm. Go check out his channel. Let me know, you know, if you enjoy this, and I'll see you guys next time.